And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to our second broadcast of the night. We just wrapped up with the Sparkling Tunic Cup, and now, 40 minutes later, we're here with World Team League WTL 2023 Winter. Day number three of round nine, the final day of this round of this week. Ooh, we're going to be wrapping things up here with our first best of seven of the night, Majorino Esports versus the Starving Camels. Oh my, honestly, a pretty close series here. Both players, sorry, both teams, they have been kind of struggling in their own way here leading into this season of WTL. Again, it has been heartbreaking to see the Starving Camels without their ace player, without Firefly, but they are trying to make do without him, and we'll see if they can. Up first, we have Nightmare versus Tudming, followed by Estrella versus Cyan, and we end it with Future versus Silky in a TVZ. Oh boy, again, Nightmare coming in as arguably the ace player, the favored player here of Macharino Esports. Can Tudming cause an upset? Now, when it comes to the Starving Camels, they are renowned. They are known for their preparation, for their upsets. Can we pull it off? In the bottom right-hand corner, we have, for the Macharino Esport, Nightmare. And in the top left, we have, for the Starving Camels SSLT, it is Tudming. Here we go. Again, we have seen players like Tudming, Cyan, Silky, and Firefly in seasons past cause these upsets, come in with hyper-prepared, hyper hyper-specified builds here to snipe and shut down players, whether it's in Game 1 or Game 2. I want to believe that we can continue to do the same here in the winter season of WTL. For now, though, it is going to be an uphill battle. And for now, a big shout out to the sponsors, Doyu, Honkai Star, Taidu, and Autofool as well. Of course, I love these sponsors for this season of WTL. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. We would not have this event. We wouldn't have Masters Coliseum, Kung Fu Cup. StarCraft would be worse off for it. So, uwu, everyone. Uwu. <laughs> Honkai Star is the, the anime gacha game that you that you saw an ad of earlier. Um, much love. <laughs> But now we're getting into our openers. Hatch Gas Pool here from Tudming. Everything looking normal. Everything looking quite standard for the time being. But we are loading into Oceanborn. Oceanborn has a shorter rush distance by ground. So we have seen quite a lot of all-ins and aggressive styles on this map. Now you can be very secure on three bases. Your three base setup is you can actually fortify yourself quite well here. So it can be difficult to break that. But the fourth base, that's when things get a little bit more uh, uneasy. And that's when you can maybe create an opening for your opponent to try to take advantage of you so we'll see if the game does go on that that long especially considering i'm talking about tuning being aggressive i'm talking about tuning maybe coming in with some kind of all-in or some kind of timing attack ready for nightmare i shouldn't ignore nightmare the fact that nightmare is also a player that thrives in the mid game he's a very aggressive player we saw that come into play a couple of days ago Last week, even, or I said a couple of days ago, uh, in Kung Fu Cup, a couple of days ago in Kung Fu Cup, we casted Nightmare versus Lambo. Lambo did so well making it into the quarterfinals. Lambo, he took down Bion. He took down Bion a couple of days. We, we, were, we were the only people to cast it as well, but uh, if, you're, if you're interested in the VODs, it was an amazing series. Lambo versus Bion was beautiful, and that led into Lambo versus Nightmare in the next round, and Nightmare mates with... DTs with Dark Templar, with Glaive and Epps. Nightmare just had his way with Lambo in that best of three series and it did end up taking him down. It was a little bit bittersweet. It was great to see Lambo do so well, but you know, was his uh, run was cut short to fight Nightmare in the end. And that just goes to show how dangerous Nightmare is as a player. Again, doesn't necessarily... I mean, he can play standard, don't get me wrong, but he can always whip out aggression. And already, the Void Ray is on the way. So it's a Stargate opener from Nightmare, which is normal, but it's going to be a Void Ray first. The goal of this Void Ray, the, the role here, is to shut down Overlords and keep Tudming in the dark as to what comes next. Could be a Twilight Council, could be a Forge, could be a, um, could be a second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon to get into Sky Toss. There is a lot available here for Nightmare to whip out, and Tudming will have a hard time figuring out what exactly it is. It could even just be standard play. It could even just be a third base. Tudming has to try to piece it together. There it is. We have a Twilight Council on the way, a gateway as well. So far, no forge. The longer this goes on, this goes on without a forge, the more this screams Flavor Depths. And I mean, hey, this worked against Lambo the other day. <laughs> like again, 
a very aggressive follow up here from Nightmare. There it is, three gates are in production. It's going to be four gate glaives from Nightmare. Now, this should not be an all in, um, but if we have stayed in gas, I don't, I, we haven't seen the gas count yet and how much is being mined from the gases. But if we're staying in, this could be glaive adepts into Dark Templar or it could just be glaive adepts into a third base. Like, and there it is, third base is on the way. And we have stayed in gas, actually. Bear that in mind. So we can take up a little bit further here as well. We have options for Nightmare. Uh, for now, again, third base is being taken. Nightmare is going to be moving out with his first Void Ray, just keeping his opponent in the dark, hunting down as many of these Overlords as possible. We already got one, and we're looking to get a second. And nice pickles here so far from Nightmare. Behind this, Toonming is going for a Roach Warren. Oh, a bit of a late Roach Warren, actually. That was around a 4 minute 30, 4 minute 40 ish Roach Warren timing. Uh, and unfortunately for him, like, we need Roaches sooner rather than later because the Adepts are coming. Here's that follow up. We spoke about the additional gases, and we're getting, in, we're getting into a Forge for plus one. This should be leading into Blink Stalkers as well. So, again, we're just working on that next step once the Glaive Adepts get their damage done. And we'll see if they can. We'll see if Toonming is going to be ready for it. As Oh, he's droning! <laughs> Toonming, he just made a wave of drones. Ay, ay, ay. And here come the Adepts. They're going to be zooming across the map. Toonming has very little on the ground to defend. He now spots the Adepts coming. He just made more drones! No shot. He just made another wave of workers. Toonming, we need roaches. No, we need roaches right now. And he has been droning hard. Tutoring up to 65 workers. The Adepts do reveal themselves. We do have a decent amount of links, and it's not like an all-in amount of Adepts, but we make our way in between the bases. Roach is still on the way, and mate, we can go for the mineral lines. We're going for secure damage. We're going for the Roach Warren, even, and we're going to get it. Another Transfuse. Transfuse is going to keep it alive a little bit longer, but the Roach Warren will go down. Oh, my God. Nightmare, instead of going for economic damage, which he totally could have done, he totally could have gone for worker damage. He goes for the Roach Warren that will make his follow-up that much easier to execute. It's a big delay on roach production, big delay on roach speed as well. Only four roaches were made, which again is why I believe that we, we could have done a little bit more here. Nightmare taking a more conservative approach instead of going for those drone kills, just threatening shades and working on his plus one and blink. So very careful play here from Nightmare. Doesn't want to throw away his advantage and he does have one. Oh, going to get a queen. Going for another queen as well. Now, what I will say is that because Nightmare didn't go for worker kills, like, the economy of Tutoring isn't too bad. Like, he joined up to 65, and he wasn't punished. He should have been punished, but he wasn't punished for it. So, so far, so good. No, that was a kill. No, that was a kill in the fourth base, not a cancel. Aye, aye, aye. The Void Ray went ham and killed a hatchery. Not like this. I was about to say that the economy is looking good for Tutoring, and he should be okay, like, getting into his Roach army. But alas... That is 300 minerals down the drain. That's a big delay on the fourth hatchery as well. And hopefully Toonming can keep this hatchery alive as we force another cancel. And here we go. Toonming, he's cutting workers at three base saturation. 61 drones. That's all he has. That's all he needs. And Toonming should be going all in. Um, now, it's still a couple of seconds away from plus one and, and uh, I almost said charge. Plus one and roach speed. But regardless, the upgrades are on the way. We have four overlords as well. And we're sending everything across the map. Toonming. One way or another, the game will end. Either he kills Nightmare or he dies trying. Adepts, they commit to the shade. They get into the mineral line. We do take a moment there to attack. At the same time, we have Stalkers lying in wait here, holding the ramp. We dive on top of the Ravagers. The Biles, they will uh, barely not connect, and we can take good trades here. Nightmare shutting Toonming's army down. GG gets called, and Nightmare will take game number one. <laughs> GG. GG, well played. A solid game there out of Nightmare. Again, it's really interesting. It was an aggressive opener from Nightmare. An aggressive follow-up, I should say. You know, Void Ray into Glaive and Epps. And he could have gone wild. He could have gone crazy in those mineral lines. But no, he's like, you know what? I'm going to just kill your Roach Warren. I'm going to just kill your Roach Warren. I'm going to skirt around the edge. I'm going to kill some Queens. And I'll kill you with my follow-up instead. And make sure that you have a hard time getting into your own Roach production. Get into plus one. Get into blink. And uh, yeah, just really solid play there out of Nightmare. Very well done. Very well done. Meanwhile, for Toonming, uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to keep up, wasn't prepared for the Glaive Adepts, even though they didn't kill his workers. Because he didn't make any roaches, he couldn't protect his Roach Warren. It's, you know, damage was still done nonetheless. And Toonming was just unable to get a read on what his opponent was up to and was just far too greedy as a result. I say too greedy. 
well he just he didn't know that it wasn't safe to be greedy that's the thing he just didn't know how much danger he was in until it was too late until it was far too late and now with that nightmare does take the first game but now we're getting to game number two this is going to be tutoring's map of choice and this is an interesting one we're loading into alkyone as game two and this is considered by many by everyone to be a very macro oriented map a lot of bases to be taken a very secure three and four base setup this feels like we want to get into a longer game but we'll see if we get there in the bottom left hand corner for Matarino esports nightmare and in the top right we have for the starving camels for sslt it is to me here we go now there's a bit of there's a bit of a give and take here on the one hand very very uh a very macro oriented map here to get into a stable three four five base economy we've seen a lot of split map scenarios here on alkyone this is basically like the new gresman if you're familiar with the previous map pool if you're familiar with gresman or data c before that you know there's always a map that is kind of renowned for just split map play just really long late game uh matchups that's kind of what what uh, alkyone is turning into but there is also the goal bases. The goal bases are also something to factor in. And we have seen a lot of Zerg players like a laser Lambo to name a few. Um, I think even dark has done it once before as well, where you can actually take the gold as your natural, or even take the gold as your third base and try to take advantage of it. Try to sneak away with it, run away with it and go for an all in, uh, making use of those gold minerals. We can see here that we haven't taken it as the natural. So it looks like Tuning isn't really planning on rushing into the gold and trying to sneak it out but uh it's it was, it was a possibility this is something you need to be wary of on this map and that's for now hatch gas pool standard opener here from tudming at least he wasn't forced to take the unnatural natural at least his bases are where they should be and we're just kind of easing into the early game easing into our game two meanwhile nightmare most likely is going to be going for a stargate opener now again because of the more uh, macro nature of this map i can't imagine we're going to be going glaive ups again for a second time maybe dt's maybe dark templar would be a good opener just because dt's lead into an archon drop and that's a good way to just gain map control and you know shut down your zerg opponents and keep them pinned back at home while you expand and take more bases i'm curious what kind of approach nightmare is going to take especially considering that as a protoss player he's one of the more aggressive protosses so i'm curious I am curious. For now, Stargate Opener, which you know, we assumed would be upon us. Stargate Opener into what I would love, actually, um, is Void Ray once again. And from the Void Ray Opener, we don't go for a Twilight Council in Glaives. We go for a second Stargate in a Fleet Beacon. I would, <laughs> we've seen we've seen Nightmare do this before. And I, I wouldn't be opposed to it specifically on Alkyone. I mentioned before that it's very difficult to kind of break a player on three or even four bases. Um, so may as well just rush ahead into something like sky toss that's that's a possibility <laughs> but we'll see we'll see what nightmare does decide to do for now adepts are going to be threatening a shade in towards the main stargate's finishing up and do we go for the void ray or an oracle which one do we go for now nightmare just still trying to decide what he wants there it <laughs> you know like, look, I know that I, I I went through the thought process myself because it's like, look, if I was Protoss, I would do this. And then <laughs> I didn't really think he would. Fleet Beacon is on the way. But, uh, okay, we're rushing into Sky Tops. <laughs> Let's go. I, it makes sense. This, like, this is a really good map for it. This is a really good map. A right as the station is the other one where you can just, like, defend, secure yourself. And we don't have the second Stargate, which is interesting. Uh, is this, like, a Mothership Rush? Like, this is not... This is not how you typically rush into Sky Toss. Only one Stargate. I'm really perplexed, actually. I'm curious. Tempest. One Tempest. We are making what, but we're still investing into techno tectonic destabilizers. Huh. <laughs> I, hmm. Interesting. Now we get the second. I, is this Stargate? I don't think that was. I don't think it was intentionally meant to be this late. It's a that's a late second Stargate, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to get into these Tempest. Um, huh? 
Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, really a very, a very different way of getting into this. But it's going to be a uh, double side into Ten Tempest production. Now, this should only be four. This should only be four Tempest, and then we go into Ground Toss. This has been a very trendy thing recently. For those that have, that have been tuning into WTL, for those that have been tuning into KSL and ESL Asia, if you've been watching the Cranky Dark Kings, you would know that this is a build that has been making its way through the Korean scene over the past month. Hero, Classic, Nightmare, they've all been embracing, going for Tempest, then bam, into Blink Stalkers, into a ground army instead, hoping to force an overreaction by the Zerg player. This shouldn't be just like Tempest into Void Rays, into Sky Toss, into Storm. Like it's it's not that kind of like Sky Toss rush. And you can see it already. Twilight Council's on the way on the way. This should be for either Charge or Blink. Most likely Blink. And there's a gateway explosion. So again. We're hard switching into ground toss. We're going to be revealing these tempests. And again, the goal here is to hopefully force an overreaction, force a spire, and force out too many corruptors. Meanwhile, Tudming, he's taking a fourth and he's going into a bailing nest. He's going into a bane bust. Oh boy. I mean, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's joining up a little bit here. He's cutting workers at 49. That's a lot of links on the way. This could work. Like Nightmare, he's sneaking out with his Tempest. He has a lot of Tempest. He's still not into his Ground Toss army. There's six gateways on the way. I think that's eight gateways in total. But Nightmare doesn't have a lot at home to defend. And Tudming is doubling down on the all in. Mate, he's got a lot of links. A lot of links on the way. Plus, some is about to kick in. The Tempest are about to reveal themselves, but there's no turning back from Tudming. Things are about to get weird. <laughs> Here we go. We're pulling the trigger. Queens are coming forward, Ling Bane rushing across the map. Where are the Banelings though? 12 Banelings up. Oh, this is far away. Those Banelings are very far away. It's going to take a while for him to be able to bust down that natural. The Banelings going to be walling in. Meanwhile, this base is going to go down. Blink on the way. We have a ground army. Uh, it, uh, can can Tudming pull off this bust? I don't know if he can. Like, it's just taking so long. But we can see the lair taking a lot of hits here. And here we go. The Bane Bust is upon us. We're trying to break on through. We do break down the wall initially. The gateway goes down. The Cyber Core close to going down as well. Lings are going for a full surround. And it looks like we do get on top of the Stalkers. Blink is not done, by the way. We're chewing through the Stalkers. It's working. At the same time, bases are falling across the map. Things are getting very chaotic here. Cyber Core goes down. The Overcharge doing what it can. Keeping these Stalkers alive. Wow, the Stalkers, they survived the attack. The Overcharge did so much there for Nightmare. He lost 15 workers, but he holds strong. Meanwhile, these Tempests, they've gotten two hatcheries and they want the main. They're going for the main base. They want the lair. We don't want to overextend, though. We do not want to overextend as we do chip away at this at this lair. The Queens, they cannot engage. We have a full wall off back at home. The Lings, they can't break in. GG gets called and Nightmare will take the series 2-0. to zero taking down to me but things got rowdy <laughs> gg things got rowdy but i i want to believe because remember to he morphed in those bailings so far away they were towards the top right, top left hand corner of the map if they were if they were morphed in a little bit sooner if we attacked like 10 15 seconds sooner like that matters every second counts in starcraft every second does count and you gotta you gotta go for it. And I do feel like Tudming was maybe a little bit too conservative with his Ling Bane all in. If he had hit a little bit faster, maybe he breaks the natural, maybe he breaks um through that army, and who knows, maybe we can go for a proper base trade where we force a recall back home and things get even more chaotic. But regardless, GG well played. Nightmare takes it. Shout out to Tudming though. He uh he again made things very, very tense towards the end. <laughs> Shout out to Tudming. With this, we're going to be getting ready for our second matchup here. It's going to be a best of two between Astrea and Cyan in the PvP. We're going to be going on a short break. We'll see you guys soon.
and welcome back everyone welcome back ooh, to our second best of two here of this series of the same league match we just wrapped up with Tudming versus nightmare and now we're here with the pvp with astraea versus cyan and i'm excited for this because even though on paper astraea he's a little bit more accomplished you know he's one of the best players in the americas region if not the best player in the americas Cyan has been doing damn well recently. You know, it was a couple of days ago where we saw we casted Cyan, or we saw him, sorry, uh, go up against Oliveira and take Oliveira down, and we were able to cast him there soon after against Dark, taking Dark to the ace match. Cyan, he's been really in form, but here we go in the bottom left-hand corner for Match Arena Esports. It is going to be Astraea. And in the top right, we have his opponent. We have, for the starving camels, Cyan. This is Elite. Go. <laughs> Here we go. The PvP is upon us. Oh, oh wait. Okay, okay. Hold on. I was a little bit distracted. <laughs> Here we go. We're getting to our best of two. And already we have a very interesting start to the game. I appreciate it here as both Cyan and Estrella are setting up for a gate expand. This is not normal here. And I love that both players are embracing this again. Hecate is more of a macro oriented map. It is kind of more what we would be expecting to be seeing here. And yeah, gate expands are going to be upon us. We should be looking to try to take that natural base. Gases are being taken as we speak. A little bit faster for Cyan. So it looks like Cyan is going for a faster Stargate. He's going to be going Stargate into expand. Meanwhile, Astraea is going to be going for a faster Nexus instead. We're going to try to get away with a faster Nexus. Now, Probes are just going to be annoying each other as much as they can. Delaying that Nexus for as long as possible here. Trying to one-up each other. And we'll see if this does lead into something like a one base all in. Now, Zealots are on the way. <laughs> uh, we just want to expand, but we just want to expand. Probe should be going for pylon blocks as well, just delaying each other. And again, I'm curious if uh, Cyan is going to end up committing to that Stargate or going in a different direction instead. As Australia does pull back into gas. Stalkers are on the way. There's that Stargate we were speaking about. Again, because Cyan got faster gases, it does make plenty of sense for him to go for a faster Stargate, which is now in production. Now, this Stargate should be for Oracles to get across the map to get some economic damage done. And again, as we mentioned, Astray is going to be the one with the faster Nexus. A lot of that just comes down to the gases early on. So we are going to be getting into this. Again, Astraea with a slightly the slightly better economy. Cyan going to be looking to get some economic damage to make up for that. Again, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this Oracle. As Cyan finally does get his expansion up and soon to be running. Going to be moving on out. We do have our tech of choice as well from Australia going for a Twilight Council even. Okay. <laughs> Going to be going for his Twilight Council instead. Going to, be for, going to be for Blink. I believe the Probe Scout did see the Stargate as well. So, again, Astray is fully aware that he has to be ready for this Oracle. Which means it's going to be that much more difficult for this Oracle to actually get damage done. And we'll see. We'll see if we can make some magic happen here. Shield batteries are finishing up. Now, if we invest into a second Oracle, we can, of course, ignore the shield battery and one-shot workers. So, there's potential here for Cyan. There is a lot of potential. And Cyan is moving out. The goal here is that Cyan wants to try to distract the grand, the ground army. He wants to try to drag the attention of these soldiers away from the mineral lines and create an opening for his Oracle. The Oracle actually going straight for that natural instead. We're going to be adding some DPS and going to be focused on the stalker. Up. Oh! Up. Oh, we cannot. The shield battery is just too strong, and Cyan gets forced out. Aye, aye, aye. So far, the Stargate opener has not paid off here for Cyan, but at least he keeps the Oracle alive. At least the Oracle does survive. We 
to get into this and yeah we're gonna be throwing down the stasis trap instead we have a dark shrine on the way again there is a lot of pressure on cyan to get damage done because he knows that he is behind economically oh meanwhile Estrella turning the tables on cyan instead going for the proxy gateway okay <laughs> Proxy Gate is on the way here for Australia. So far, he's keeping up with the Oracles, zoning the Mac. Forcing back that army. Hasn't seen the Dark Shrine yet. I believe there is no Robo for Australia either, but ah, it's on the way. It's in production here for our Blue Protoss. He will soon gain access to that to that observer. Stalkers are moving out. Stasis Trap does get triggered here in the center of the map. Likewise, Cyan just trying to get in position. The Oracle taking a lot of hits. Oh, it does go down. Ay, ay, ay. And <laughs> what is happening right now? Uh, Astrea behind this, taking a third base here, out towards the top left, going for a bit of a hidden nexus instead. Uh, okay. <laughs> As here we go, he's going to be forcing his way in towards that natural base, getting a couple of shots in. Takes down some of those stalkers, going straight for the kill. He does get eyes on the Dark Shrine. He sees, he knows. And he should be preparing back at home. Detection is on its way. It has arrived. No, it's moving out across the map. We need it back home. Come back. Ah. DTs have revealed themselves. Observer, second observer does arrive just in time. And Estrella, he's holding. Meanwhile, across the map, he's trying to force his way into that natural again. He's getting ahead. We see Cyan also taking his own ninja base. What is going on? <laughs> How? How are they so in sync? I mean, they're in sync, but Estrella's like one step ahead, which is wild here. So again, both players taking their own hidden bases. Estrella rotating around. He has blink. He has high ground vision with the observer, which means he can go straight for the main. Uh oh. He can ignore that army, go straight for the main base, and try to camp the production instead. He rotates around. The army has been revealed, and Estrella, he goes for the natural. Takes down a pylon, threatens that cyber core. Oh, that's going to be a lot of hits. The overshot trying to keep it alive. That's going to be a kill on the cyber core. That means no more stalkers can be warped in. Ay, ay, ay. Meanwhile, Estrella, he does recall over towards that hidden base, gets a fully up and, up and running operational. Oh my god. The half gold mining freely. Cyan still hasn't saturated his own. Going for a blink for the DTs. Oh my god, we're doubling down. I can understandable. Like Cyan he's gotta make he's gotta do something here. Needs to come back in some way. Here, Cyan going to be threatening his push. Proxy Gateway going to be shut down. So far, we haven't scouted. It looks like Cyan hasn't gone for his own recall, but... Oh, he scouts! The DTs! They come across the ninja base. Swipe away at that mineral line. They had three worker kills at the same time as Australia. He has to respond. He has to rotate back around. Does need to save this Nexus. There is detection. Oof. He barely does miss the army. Tries to hold position. Gets one. Gets one DT. The other does escape. And with this Astrea, he still has a lead. Still up in army. The Dark Templar are keeping him at bay for a moment. So Astrea is moving out. <laughs> we just see a moment of reprieve here as Cyan he's able to hold on what's important is that Australia hasn't seen that hidden base so he doesn't know that he has to push forward like he's just thinking he's containing his opponent to two bases so he thinks he's getting further and further and further ahead than he really is I mean he's still in a good position but not as good as he otherwise would think as he does dive on top of the army the immortal has arrived a bunch of stalkers go down Cyan, ah, these are just too many losses. He has now fully saturated his hidden base. DT comes back in, killing more probes. But Estrella, he can just keep on pushing. At this point, especially with that Immortal, yeah, he can dive on the army. 
in a head-to-head -head fight. Astraea, he has too much. He has the Observer as well for detection. He's going to back off. Does respect the overcharge. But again, he has double the army supply of his opponent. The Dark Shadow, he's killed 26 workers. <laughs> 26 probes have gone down. The economy of Astraea is in shambles. We got to go. The longer this goes on, the better it is for Cyan. Overcharge has run out. Yeah, we just dive right into the natural base. The boys, they have to be pulled. Oh my god, but the concave wasn't too good. Cyan, can he hold? The Immortal! The Immortal's gonna be focused down. The boys doing so much here. Again, we can afford to lose workers. Cyan, he is ahead by so much in that worker count. We can throw away some probes. And he does force back Astraea. And suddenly... Cyan is in the commanding position. Astraea, he still hasn't scouted the ninja base. He still doesn't know. Oh my god. Again, he still thinks that he's upper base compared to his opponent. And here we go. Cyan is pushing out. Now with momentum. Things are going his way. We have a fourth Nexus in production as well for both players. From here, uh, he, fi he finally comes across it. <laughs> he finally does come across the hidden base, forces a recall. Probes are going to be going down, and now Cyan is going to have an awkward time defending both locations at once. The Dark Templar, they're still going ham. They dive on that cannon. Stalkers are moving out. Astraea, now aware of how much danger he's been in. We have Immortals. Australia going to be out positioning Cyan and gets on top of the base. He gets on top of the mineral line. Going to be evening up that worker count or trying to. Still down 20 workers. Doctor, oh my god, the DTs, they're doing so much. They continue to just wreak havoc. Make another nine plus probes. Oh, sorry, four plus, four plus probes. Australia getting zone damage done. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. <laughs> As thankfully this time there are, there are Dark Temple, sorry, there are cannons and shield batteries set up in some of these fringe bases. So Astraea is going to be stabilizing his economy. He did get a kill on that Nexus. Now he's up a base compared to his opponent. Suddenly the pressure is now on Cyan. Going to be shutting down this gateway. Going for a backup fourth. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's really hard to call this situation here. I kind of want to give the edge to Australia. I know that he's been losing a lot of probes. He's been bleeding out so many workers. But he's finally gotten a handle on the DTs. He's finally gotten site defense all over the place. And he's pushing forward. He has a much larger stalker count. Oh, we do see Cyan not quite in position. And denying this fourth is all Australia has to really do. Just deny the fourth. And this time he's aware of the base count. This time he is containing his opponent to a much lower work, a base count than his own. Likewise, Cyan, he hasn't seen that fourth. He's going for it though, but there is detection. There is an observer. And yeah, we, we force this back. Cyan did an amazing job here at just creating chaos and at times was ahead. But it is slipping away. <laughs> Another wave of Dark Templar coming in. Cyan pushing towards that fourth. Trying to. But again, there's just a massive wave of stalkers waiting for him. DTs, they dive on the cannon. They get a kill. The cannon goes down. But we have the Observer. Observer's going to be coming in. Dark Templar get cleaned up. Not the most worthwhile trade there for Cyan. Overcharge just popped astray. He's holding on. Things still very tense. Very tense between the players. We have similar economies, similar armies. Both players working towards charge. Cyan does have the slightly better upgrades here with plus two. Straya, they're about to catch up and at the same time going for a split push, trying to distract his opponent. 
Ah, it doesn't get too much, though. Cyan was ready for it. Oh, even punishes Estrella, shutting down two of those Stalkers. At the same time, Estrella pushing on the left, but the Immortal is lying in wait. We dive on it. Overcharge is for the Immortal, putting in a lot of damage here on this army, but it does go down. Estrella trying to brute force his way through, but the Zealots have arrived. He tanks some shots. The Concave is real, and Cyan holds. Does hold on. Australia losing 23 Stalkers in the process. Again, this can still go either way. One bad fight for either player, and that could be it. Plus three in production. Around the same time for both Australia and Cyan. He's going to try to move around. Did lose his Immortal earlier, trying to replace it. Speaking of, Estrella now up at Immortal. Does have the stronger army here on the left-hand side. Another Nexus being taken. Cyan has potential with this Marauding army. He is kind of rotating around, shocking around the center of the map. He's going to back off. Likewise, Estrella trying to find that army. Figure out where he's going. Look at the Unistab here. You can see that Estrella, he is up quite far here in Stalkers. 50 Stalkers to 38. Jesus. Of course, Cyan is making up for that in Zealots and Archons. Okay, the goal of these Zealots are just to tank shots. So far, the whole position. Holding on top of the ramp. Cyan catching another Observer. And yes, yeah, Cyan, he's actually able to defend here with far less than his opponent, but Estrella, I think he realizes that. The Archon! The Archons go down. Big pickoffs. Meanwhile, Cyan turning back around, getting ready for potentially a surround. Okay, he, he just comes back. <laughs> he's, he backs the hell off. Doesn't want to engage this army, not yet. Estrella has maxed. Cyan slightly behind, down 20 supply. But he's getting there. And again, we have a much better angle here. A pseudo surround coming in from Cyan. He collapses on these stalkers. A lot of them go down. The Immortals exposing themselves. And the Immortals, they will go down one after the other. Oh, Australia having a really rough fight. Just caught out in the open. Got surrounded. And even though Australia had a much larger army because of the positioning, Cyan traded better. Here we go. Likewise, so overextending a little bit does bleed out one of those Immortals. Oh, Australia coming in with a harassing force of Stalkers. Not too bad. Picks off three. Three probes. Oof. Kind of cost him a couple of those Stalkers there. Eh? Likewise, overcharges pop, but we just power through it. Another Archon goes down. Ay, ay, ay. Cyan, he's catching some, some Stalkers. Yeah, he's overwhelming Estrella here on the right-hand side. At the same time, Cyan pushing him forward, trying to, uh, hoping at least that Estrella is pulled apart, but Estrella, he stands strong. Even punishes Cyan. Like Cyan is just trying to create these openings. Trying to force Estrella to split up his army. So far, Estrella keeping up. Getting to the rest of these upgrades. Cyan with plus one armor over his opponents, working on plus two. Worker counts again, pretty similar with each other. Australia has the better economy because of that gold base with the half gold. As he does expand, taking another Nexus. Uh, where's the dissection, by the way? Okay, it's a little bit further back, but the Observer is on the way. No! Cyan overextends with his own. Does lose an Observer. Big loss. The army is going to back off for a moment. We have the bay on the way for Cyan. We're finally working towards Disruptors. We've been sticking with almost a purely Stalker Immortal Archon-based composition, but now Cyan is the first to kind of tech 
in that direction. First disruptor's on the way. And this could change everything. Again, yeah, disruptor's a very hidden miss. Cyan trying to take another expansion here, but he's being overwhelmed. He has to cancel. Cancels the Nexus. Force back. DT's coming in. While the armies are dancing, Sand, he's hoping to sneak away with those disruptors. I would love to see a second robo to get into double disruptor production. For now, just one. Observer speed on the way. The Niva! <gasps> it's going up! No! Oh, massive connection here on the Stalkers! Oh my god, and now we can break through! Sand, he can push forward. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, massive connection. We do have the overcharge. We have to respect it. We do have to respect the overcharge. At the same time, Sand forced to cancel on the right-hand side. But this Disruptor, it is going to reset. We can keep on pushing. Oh, my God. <laughs> so again, Sand desperately trying to... He's been trying to take this expansion for quite some time. And he just cannot... Being zoned away at every moment. Second Disruptor is on the way. You thought one was good. Now we have a second. Now, to be fair, Astray, he's aware. He's now aware of the potential of Disruptors. He's going to be looking out for them. He's going to be looking out for the Novas. Oh, meanwhile, Astray gaining ground on the right-hand side. Once again, going to be forcing another cancel. Dark Templar coming forward. Ooh, that was a cancel on that Nexus. Never goes up. Ooh, doesn't connect. Clutch moment there. Good snipe from Estrella. Shuts down the Disruptor. But remember, there are two. There are two Disruptors. Unless we miss the other one. But you can see Cyan gaining ground. Cleans up all the Zealots. Finally establishing that base. Meanwhile, here comes that Nova. Estrella's looking. Is he? Oh, he is! <laughs> we blink on forward. Dive on top of the Disruptor. But another is coming out. Oh, again, been a very tense couple of moments here. Cyan slightly ahead in supply. Still desperately trying to break through this main army. Ooh, Astrea rotating towards the right-hand side. A risky move. A very risky move here from Astrea. He's abandoning his center base. That Nexus should go down. And we're pushing on the right. So it's are going to be moving forward. We dive on top of that Nexus. Uh, I'll wait for the stream to catch up. Um, oh. As we dive on top of the Nexus, and we should be forcing a cancel at the same time. We do see a Cyan trying to engage. Trying to come in here from the left-hand side as well. He dives on the army past the bridge. The force fields are looking good. The Nova oh, doesn't connect. Nova doesn't quite connect here. It's Estrella. He has the better concave. Uh, Cyan, is he overextending? This is not the fight to take. Cyan, ah. Uh -huh. Pushing a little bit too far out. Takes a really rough fight. And Estrella is breaking through. We have reinforcements though. The Nova, once again, does not connect. We focus down the Disruptor. But Astray, he gets away with abandoning his base towards the left. So the Nexus is still standing strong. DTs are coming in, but we have detection. Yeah, so many observers have died this game. But we have detection. The DTs went down. Astray taking a better fight. With this Cyan trying to force his way through up a ramp into a concave. Like, this is just not working out. Ah. Cyan, he may have the better upgrades, but we even have an overcharge behind this. Like, these, these just haven't been good trades. Cyan desperately trying to take another expansion. He's down a base. Down two bases even compared to his opponent. Our Templar coming in, but we have... Cannons. Astrea, I love that he's going to his own DTs as well. Into Blink. Oh, we're going to find a good angle here. Getting a couple of probes. Uh, only a couple. 
Does drag some of the army out of position. Straya trying to break through. Uh, probes are going down. We're, we're able to abuse the high ground even. And yeah, it looks like despite the efforts here of Cyan. And he had some really good moments this game. Astraea has too much. He just has the better economy. He's denying mining here at the right-hand side. Astraea skyrocketing ahead here in terms of supply. Likewise, Cyan, he's just been having some really rough engagements trying to force his way up a ramp. Just hasn't been working out. Astraea, he knows how far ahead he is. He knows he can just dive on this. But we have the overcharge. The overcharge putting in a lot of work. Does keep Cyan in this. Does keep him alive, but... Did, lose, did bleed out a lot of Stalkers. And you can see that all, all Australia has to really do here is just maintain this position. Do you have another Nova? Does not connect. From here we are. <laughs> From here we're gonna try to force our way up the ramp once again here with a disruptor, but it's just not gonna be enough. And you can see the disparity in supply is just getting larger and larger at this point. Australia getting further ahead, taking even one of Cyan's bases towards the top left. Ay ay ay. Just another Nexus under control of Australia. And he's about to max out. He's about to reach 200 supply. Another disruptor goes down. Not like this. Uh, did cite the observer, which means we can make use of some Dark Templar. We do come across one of the new bases here of Australia. Once again, though, just focusing on so many of those probes. DTs are going ham. Australia, he does have another observer. Oh, they're all over the place, though. <laughs> As eight more probes go down. Now, it's always difficult here for Australia to push in. Like, uh, again, it's one of those things with these Novas. They provide a lot of value. And the Novas, they connect. Oh, my God. A good moment for Cyan. But does he have enough as the disruptors are being focused down one after the other? Not like this. But yeah, I was going to say that, like, we can never really commit here if you're Australia just because of those disruptors. But the Novas went off. Now we can take a better fight. Oh my, oh my, oh my god. <laughs> so many free hits come in. Uh, alas, we did not have high ground vision. Never goes off. We dive in it once again. Here come the Zelt, and it looks like Australia can finally collapse on this army. Oh, we do have a slightly better concave, but here come the reinforcements. And Australia, he should have enough to overwhelm this. Should have enough to break forward into the Nexus. GG gets called. And Australia... After half an hour, <laughs> half an hour of almost non-stop action, Australia does take game number one. Oh my god. Uh. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. Australia will take it, but that was a hard-fought win there. Again, there were definitely moments for Cyan where he was getting so much economic damage on with his Dark Templar, his first couple of Disruptors and Purification Novas, um, getting away with that hidden uh, center base as well. It was mining happily for so long without any kind of contention, uh, without without any kind of um, any aggression from Australia as he didn't know it was there. There was a lot that Cyan was getting away with, but I just well, it just was not enough. Wasn't enough, which again is impressive that um, Australia was able to withstand all of that and still come out on top. The resilience of Australia is insane. <laughs> and with that, we're getting to our second game. Cyan, his map of choice, Sight Delta. Again, Cyan, he's the new ace player of the Starving Camels. If anyone can bring it back, oh, you breathe right. <laughs> if anyone can fight back here in this team league match, it's going to be Cyan. I want to believe. Want to believe. We go. DT's put Cyan back in the game. Kind of. It was um it was the Dark Templar doing a lot of damage. It was remember the hidden base, the hidden base that 
again, it was just mining freely for so long. The disruptors are doing well. The split pushes of Cyan was impressive. Was impressive. Um, was just pulling Estrella apart. But at a certain point, I think um, I think I want to say the turning point actually was over time. Like the DTs initially were doing a lot. And then they weren't, and we just kept investing. We just kept making and warping in more and more DTs, more and more Dark Templar. And over time, it was just diminishing returns, where Australia this time had cannons and observers and detection. And yeah, it was um, quite a little, uh, quite a big investment there that wasn't really paying off. Likewise, when it comes to the Disruptors, we had one really good Nova to begin with. And after that, less so. We didn't really manage to get any connections. It's, it's high risk, high reward with those Disruptors. And... I guess more importantly than all of that is the fact that Cyan took so long to take another base. He was stuck on four bases for far too long when Australia was taking a fifth, a sixth, a seventh base. And here we go in the top left-hand corner. We have for Matarino Esports, Australia. And in the bottom right-hand corner we have for the Starving Camels, it is Cyan for SSLT. Oh my god. Hello. <laughs> Hello there is Estrella. He throws down his first pylon out in the center of the map. We saw something similar to this on Oceanborn last week, if I recall correctly. Where we went for a proxy gateway and a proxy cybercore, if I'm not mistaken. There's the gateway. Are we going to proxy the cybercore as well? I imagine so. <laughs> uh, who was Estrella playing against last week? I can't remember. Um, it was a PvP. Let me just double check. I was Australia versus Nice. There we go. Now that's it's coming back to me. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. It's going to be a proxy two gate here from Australia, barely outside of his bases. And Cyan, for the time being, comes in for a scout in the dark, not aware of what's going on. Is aware that there is a proxy somewhere, but doesn't know where. He's looking for it. Ooh, meanwhile, Cyan going for a gate expand. Again, we are oh, going for a forge as well for some cannons. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this reaction out of Cyan. So, again, it is side Delta, so it's very common to just go for economic openers here on this map and go for the low ground expansion. So, Cyan, he delays his nexus here in favor of that forge so he can start working with some cannons so he can survive and defend. Meanwhile, Estrella looks like he's waiting for his Cybercore to finish up before he does commit to anything. Yeah, we have a safety cannon on the way. Estrella going for a two-gate into expand. He's not going all in. Let's go. <laughs> I love this. This worked. So basically, Estrella, he went for a two-gate opener, and because the two gateways are on his side of the map, they're relatively safe as well, or much safer, much more difficult to scout. And he's basically faking out an all-in, and he's hoping to force an overreaction, and he did. Like Cyan, he delayed his expansion, went for a forge of all things, threw down a cannon and a second pylon, and I'm sure Estrella is pretty happy with this. I'm sure he's like, okay, cool, I could just get ahead economically. And you don't really have any tech to, to punish me with. Like, there's no Robo. There's no Twilight Council. There's no Stargate. It was a Forge. You can't really use a Forge offensively. So, yeah, Estrella. Just, uh, I would say ahead. <laughs> I would say in a, in a much better position. Stalkers, they reveal themselves. They shut down uh, the Adept. And, yeah, with that, Estrella, he can just enjoy a better, a slightly better economy. Now, of course, Cyan can try to bounce back here, but it is unfortunate that Cyan doesn't have a Stargate. If he had a Stargate, he could try to get some economic damage done or try to harass. For now, he's he's just kind of stuck here. Going for a Twilight Council. Working towards Blink, I imagine. Yeah, with that, the game is going to be settling from here. We all, oh, let's go. <laughs> it was going to be settling, but we are going for a bit of a proxy. With that Twilight Council, I was assuming that we were going to be going into Blink, but no, it's going to be a Dark Run instead, which makes sense. Cyan, he knows that he's behind. He's down six probes. Like, uh, 
no no like damage has been done nothing's been killed but because of how late the expansion is he's down in workers we need to come back how do we come back dark templar now unfortunately astrea already has a robo on the way which means he will have an observer which means he should have detection oh my god astrea going straight for a third he's so greedy oh my god astrea going straight for that third base but can he defend it it's very possible that he can at the same time, Adepts, they have arrived here on the front lines. Going to be shading into the natural base. The wall is not a wall. And we can dive on the sentries. Yeah, we want those sentries. We're going to get one. Probe's going to be going down one after the other as well. Oof. And you thought the sign was behind economically before. Even more now. It's going to be six, seven. Oh, we want the sentry. No. Two sentries go down. Seven probes. Eight workers. Can we get nine? Oh, we can. We can get nine. And now it's all about the Dark Templar. They need to perform a miracle here. We need to deal a devastating amount of damage to come back in this game. Back at home, we should have an Observer. This is an Immortal on the way. Um, I'm not too sure if we do have the Observer, though. We don't. Uh-oh. There is no detection. Observer now in production, but is it too late? DTs, they have been spotted. Astray, he knows. He's aware. He's chasing it. He goes for the warp in purposefully here to block off that wall. Overcharges popped, keeping that stalker alive. Detection arrives as well. We shut down the Dark Templar. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, probes are going down to the uh, to the other DT here at the third base. I believe Adepts have been sent out as well. So we do kill six workers. That is something. That does help even things up. We got another probe as well. Things getting a little bit chaotic here. As Science trying to get into his own third. The Adept finally gets shut down. Oh. And again, Cyan, he, he was able to kill six workers, which is good. But oh, Sorry, seven probes, which is good. But he's still down ten. Still down 10 and down in tech. We can see Cyan working towards Immortals. Meanwhile, Astraea rushing into Disruptors. Into that Robotics Bay. Dark Templar does get dropped into the main. We have another DT here trying to push in towards the natural. Astraea is being pulled apart. Like, this is getting some work done. Not bad. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> as long as we keep the Warpism alive. Meanwhile, we have a cannon. Here at the third, we're going to be able to hold on. And I want to believe... I'm pretty sure the DTs did see the Disruptors. Oh my. Uh, my mistake. <laughs> it's a bay, but not for Disruptors. We're going into Colossi. All right, Estrella. Or should I call you Skillus? <laughs> All right, so Colossal Production on the way instead. This is a way to get secure splash damage for your army. It's an alternate way to deal with Zealots, for example. Not as impactful as Disruptors, but, you know, it has its place here in PvP. We do see it from time to time. Do see it, and yeah, from here, Astraea, he's just securing himself, taking up even further because he can afford to because of his better economy. Cyan is playing catch up instead, getting into a higher immortal count, which has value. Don't get me wrong, does have value. We have, uh, we have glaives on the way from Astraea <laughs> again. Glaives doesn't scale well in a PvP, but is a good way to just dive on an army, collapse, and hit a strong timing. Or even just warping a couple of um, a couple of adepts into the main. Uh, Cyan is going for a, uh, a ninja base towards the top right, which makes sense. Again, we need to do something crazy, something drastic. I would have liked this a little bit sooner, but again, ninja base is on the way nonetheless. Cyan, he needs time to get it up and running. He needs time to actually saturate that fourth. Soka's going to be moving out. Astraea taking a standard fourth base. Gateways should be shut down. Not the most important gateways anymore. They're just out here scouting, I guess. Getting a read on the army. And here we go. Australia now about to reveal his Colossi. Just 
just waiting for Glaives to finish up. <laughs> Astray, he wants to try to uh, repower these buildings and take them as his own. Throwing down that pylon. There we go. Gonna, <laughs> gonna be depowering them and shutting them down. Uh, we do have a unit of Australia moving towards the right-hand side. It looks like we will come across the ninja base. No. I think he saw it. I think he knows. I believe he is aware. Skateways are going down. We recall to the top right at the same time the stalkers they hit the fourth base of Australia. That's a lot of adepts. Jesus. Oh my god. We're warping in more. That's like 20 adepts. I mean, we've got glaives. May as well use it. 26. <laughs> 26 adepts here for Australia. A very unorthodox army, but again, does have potential. The way it works is um, adepts they actually take a lot of stalker hits to kill. Uh, much more than a stalker, for example. So they do a great job of just soaking damage, allowing your Colossus and Immortals in the back line to do a surprising amount and to really like, go to town here on your opponent's army composition. Here we go. We're going for the Shade. The goal here to collapse on these Stalkers. There's no escape. There's no way out. We commit and we're chasing this down. Stalkers are falling. Stray going to be hitting with plus two. There are some Immortals in position, but again, as we mentioned, the goal here is to just get on top of the Immortals. Show us the shade. <laughs> Show us the shade as we dance here with the army. We have to respect the Archon. The Archon does pose a big threat to those Adepts. We don't want to throw them away. We don't want that splash damage to get out of hand. The Archon does get forced back. Ah, the Immortals are exposed, and we're going right for them. First Immortal goes down, and uh, Cyan is just being bullied back. There's just too much here from Astrea. Far too much, as he will break this third base. Doesn't even get on top of the arm. He doesn't need to. As the Colossi just zone away those Stalkers, the range is just too good. At the same time, as a counterattack, but we have Adepts in position. Now we rotate towards the fifth. I say fifth because technically the fourth is top right. <laughs> technically the fourth is hidden and we don't know about it. Uh, well, yeah, we got 10 worker kills. Next is going to be falling as well. And I just, Tyan can't do anything about this. Nova goes off. Big connection. Big connection on the army, but that still just isn't enough. No, the prism goes down. Oh my god. The prism falls. We deny the warp in. Another Nova goes off and it will up. Oh, we'll connect. Good shot on those adepts. But there's that shade. The shade on the army. And we can just focus everything down. The stalkers blink away, but that just exposes the immortals and the disruptors. And with that, Cyan just barely has anything left. Down to a handful of Stalkers. The cannon from the early game is full, and GG gets called, and Astrea will take the 2 0. GG, well played. Not the easiest 2 0, though. Again, Cyan was fighting back hard, especially in game number one. Game two was a little bit more one sided. Game two was a lot more in favor of Astrea from, from early on, just because of the openers, just because of the fake outs. Uh, Australia, he was up 10 workers, which is crazy. <laughs> and uh, with that, Maturino will take the series. Four games have already been won here. We're still going to play out the last best of two. Could still go either way, but Maturino will win this regardless of the score. Going to be going on a short break. Up next, Future versus Silky. See you soon.
and welcome back everyone oh my oh my god <laughs> Oh, the instinct, the TikTok filters are out. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to our final best of two of this series. Again, match Reno Esports, they've already taken a win here, but there's still a match. Oh, wait, we're having fun. Where are we going? <laughs> there's still one best of two remaining here between Future and Silk. Oh, oh, you can see. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, my God. We're... <laughs> So having fun with these filters and uh, yeah, we're getting ready for this best of two. A TVC between Future and Silky and I've been waiting for it. I've been looking forward to it again. Silky is the strongest Zerg player in all of China and he's going to be looking to take a lead, looking to fight back for his team against Future. And this is going to be a close one because Future is also a very aggressive player. So is Silky. Like they're both aggressive by nature and we're going to be seeing these two clash here. I want to say in the early game, but... Game one was in, is on equilibrium, and I'm curious what Silky has in store for us because Silky, again, he's always coming in prepared. He's always coming in with something wild and crazy. Show us what she got. Likewise, Future has a very unique style of TBC. He's not afraid to two-base all in and pull the boys against Zerg, which is unheard, unheard of otherwise, but Future is very aggressive. Uh, likewise, he goes for eBay blocks against Zerg players as well, which is also unheard of and not something you get to see too often in this matchup. Um, yeah, Future, he just has his own builds. Like, it's really interesting. Like, he just comes up with his own openers, his own builds, his own play style, and he's very unique as a result. He's always a lot of fun to watch. Always a lot of fun because of that. So, we'll see where this all takes us. As for now, we are just getting that lobby ready. I say we're getting the lobby ready. Really, we're just looking for an outfit for Silky. Where <laughs> we're just trying to settle on the mask, the monocle, the glasses. You know, is he under the sea today? Is he, you know, in Castlevania? Is, is he like in a mansion, the haunted mansion? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what he's For now, glasses. Glasses on glasses, right? Like he's already wearing glasses. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. He's already wearing glasses. Really, this this will give him like double like like double the zoom, double the vision, and he's gonna be able to, yeah, be that much more adept at like seeing widow mines borrowed and reacting to them as well. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, we'll see how this does impact him. Oh, we're getting sleepy. <laughs> hi, yeah, hi. Why did Silky abandon his underwater underwater kingdom? He's expanding. He's expanding. He's already conquered the sea. Now he's looking to conquer the land. Conquer the America, Spappy. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. So again, we're just waiting here for said lobby. Then we're going to be diving on in. I Again, we're waiting to really determine what kind of filter we're working with. I kind of like the mask. If only we had that for Halloween. Ooh, as we do have a bit of a pause here. Uh, looks like we have a couple of technical issues. You know, just we have to make sure that the glasses are prescription. You know, we don't want to... <laughs> we don't want to come in blind here. <laughs> Hopefully everything is okay. Whether it's whole key issues or maybe a little bit of latency. Thankfully, we're not uh, too far into the game. Just here in the beginnings and won't be impacting the game too much here. Thankfully, thankfully. But uh, yeah, this I want to say this series is going to be a little bit more unpredictable. Um, I haven't casted Future in quite some time. It's been like a couple of weeks. A uh, big reason for that is Future is back in the States. Future, he was living in Korea for the majority of this year. I say majority, like the first six months. First six months of this year was uh, living in Korea, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, but he was staying with Australia. He was staying, staying with Scarlet and Zayn. They were all practicing training and improving in Korea and... Yeah, now he's back in the States, and he's still, of course, kept his form. That's the thing. Like, he's still a terrifying player. I do think he underperformed a little bit in ESL Mash's winter. I think we... I at least was expecting um, a deeper run. What what happened with Kelzer is what I was kind of expecting with, uh, with Future, but... Yeah, I did have some rough matches, a couple of rough performances, and... Um, you know, I'm sure he's willing to redeem himself. He's waiting to redeem himself in DreamHack Atlanta. Like many NA players... Future will be there. He will be there. Until then, again, we're just resolving any kind of issues and actually, let's see. 
Okay, we're not we're not getting any updates on Discord, but um, <laughs> hopefully everything's okay. Maybe um, maybe they loaded into actually, I wouldn't be surprised if they loaded into like the wrong server or something. So we have to remake. Make sure that ping is stable for everyone involved. Before we do get into this. When it, when is Discord getting this as well? I know that Discord has its own like um, its own green screen, like its own like fake green screen. That's what Yaku uses. That's what I used to use as well. But when are we getting like the dog filters? The the duck filter? Ah, oh, duck spot. Quack. Be beautiful. Oh, and we're loading back in. We have returned, and here we go. It looks like we did remake the lobby in the top right hand corner. We have for Matarino Esports Future. And in the top left, we have for the Starving Camels, SSLT, it is Silky. Ah. With glasses on glasses. But uh, yeah, it looks like we did remake the lobby. Looks like we did probably have to remake it because of the server. As previously, I believe Future was top left. Now he's top right. <laughs> but here we go, and... Oh boy, Future going for the low ground racks as well. I'm really curious as to what he whips out. So Future, he has a very unique build. He has a very unique build where he does go for what looks to be like a two racks Reaper, but he goes Marine instead uh, into a later timing. And he's going CC first. <laughs> Let's go. CC first against Silky. Bold move, mate. Bold move here as Silky is known as, a, as an aggressive player, he's not shy to go for a gas first or something more economic, something like a roach rush. So, very bold move. But I kind of like it because Equilibrium, it's known for greedy play. It's known for um, faster goal bases even from the Zerg player. So, yeah, I like this as a way to offset that. So, it's going to be CC first into two racks. I imagine it's going to be two racks. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be Future's Variation, where he just makes Marines, where he skips out on Reapers. Which, again, is a risky thing to do. But it's a risk the Future is willing to take. There we go. Second gases are in production here. From our American Terran. Getting into the swing of things. I'm really curious, again, if he invests into Reapers or not. He will have some gas to work with. ASV gets across the map. Does get eyes on the hatch first. There it is. This is so greedy. We aren't going marine first. We're going add-on first. It's going to be CC first into Turax into Reactor Tech Lab. The greed is crazy. <laughs> oh my god. There's the Tech Lab on the way for future. Zero units. We're going to reach the three-minute mark in this game with zero units for future. Zero fighting units, I should say. Only SCVs and... He is just getting away with so much. If Silky had gone for a gas risk, if he had gone for a Roach War, and then Future would be dead. He would 100% be dead. But alas, we're getting to the Marine production. Stim is on the way, and Future is going to be building up his army, looking to hit a Stim timing later on down the line uh, with a mass Marine army. And yeah, so far, Future just getting into his game. So I was curious. I was curious if Future was I was just dying for a moment there. I was curious if Future was gonna be going into a four axe behind this, but there is a factory on the way. So it's gonna be a two one one. I'm curious if it's gonna be a straight up two one one or a three CC two one one instead, something more economic. I mentioned before that Future, he is one that is willing to go for a two base all in in this matchup, and if we do see a starport up next, then. I would be thinking along those lines. My eyes are on our Terran. And there it is, Starport. So straight up 2 one, one. Uh, This means that we have a delayed third base. Very delayed third base. This is an eBay on the way. Second eBay, so okay. I was curious if we were going to be going for a two base all in. 
Um, but we have two eBays, which means we're going to be waiting for our upgrades to kick in. So we're thinking a little bit further ahead, but we do have a big delay on that third CC for future. So this is still very aggressive, very aggressive, very committed. This double drop that we're working towards needs to get damage done. Otherwise, future will fall behind economically. As Silky's getting his third base up and running, going to be droning on up as well. We have plus one carapace on the way. Uh, Silky has correctly identified that it is going to be a 2 one one variation, so plus one carapace is going to help so much here when it comes to that bio army. And there it is. Medivacs are on the way. We have the add-on swap with the factory and that starport. 1-1 one, one in production as well. And with the arrival of these medivacs, future should be pushing. He should be moving out. Silky, of course, confirms this. He's getting ready with his own lings. Lair is in production. Eventually a Bailey nest. For now, Silky has to defend with purely lings and queens. And there's a third CC on the way. So again, not an all-in, which is what we assumed once we saw the two eBays. If it wasn't for that, then again, I would have <laughs> would have assumed that we would just double down here on two base play instead. As future is moving out again because this threat is so delayed that this there's still damage that needs to be done future needs to deny this go base get into a mineral line kill the queens trade well against the lings there's a lot here that he needs to achieve we're now going to be pushing onto creep just clearing up whatever he can Making it easier for his follow push. We have 38 lings on the way. Oh my, Silky cutting workers early on here at 50. At 49 even. God, that is so many. That is maybe too many lings actually. Oh my god. Uh, more than enough to force Future back. But this actually really does put a dent into the drone count. Uh, maybe it's okay. I was going to say that I'm really concerned for Silky. But he has the gold. So... Even though his his worker count is really low, he makes up for it with a gold base. That's, that's okay. <laughs> and this is a power of equilibrium. This is why this is such a Zerg favored map. Ay, ay, ay. And here we go. Future, he's going to be pushing. He's going to be reinforcing it with his tank. This is going to be hitting with 1-1. One, one. Going to be up an upgrade compared to Silky. Just looking for an angle of attack. But again, Silky has been staying on a very low worker count. And this is what I meant earlier at the start of the series when I was like, aggression faces off against aggression. Where Silky, he stays on a low drone count, which means he has a massive army. Likewise, Future delayed his third base for this push. But he's up against uh, someone who's also been cutting corners and cutting his economy as well. And we just go into... <laughs> we just go straight into the main. We dive into the main base, a quadruple doom drop into it. Tank on the low ground is going to be hunted down, but no, it looks like we get a couple of good shots off here on the Lings. A really awkward fight for Silky, bleeding out so many of those Lings even. Ay, ay, ay. Bailing speed has kicked in. The target firing. Not too bad here from Future at all. Does drop, drop back on the low ground. So even though Future may have lost his tank and a handful of Marines, he traded so damn well against those Lings. Oh, the target firing once again. Two bailings are left. Future has to back off, but he does preserve most of his Marines. He lost one medevac full of Marines, but he kept three alive. And now here come the reinforcements. Future looking to just power on through. He's up in army supply. He has momentum going his way. Was able to take down a lot of lings, a lot of bailings. Catch some queens. And the tanks are sieging. The split is looking good. Silky going for his own counterattack at the same time. And do we have much at home to defend? We do. We have plenty at home. Future ready for the counterattack. Once again, maneuvering towards that main. Yeah, we're going for that doom drop. Not sure, not too sure how I feel about these tanks on the low ground. Um, but regardless, we are going for the main base. Down goes that sport crawler. Silky working towards Hive. Ling's gonna have to respond. Sporting Pool goes down. Oh my god. Sporting Pool does fall. We can see Silky trying to set up a surround. He's coming in from behind. 
and he will collapse on these tanks. Yeah, the Marines are forced to pick up, but the tanks are going down. Not a bad fight for Silky. But he did lose the spawning pool, which is quite brutal, actually. You can see, oh my god, 2,000 minerals lost for future, 6,000 for Silky. My god. The trades, the efficiency. But Silky has drawn up to 80. Drawn up past 80, plus a gold base. Silky, he has a booming economy, and you can see that that's reflected in his bank. But he has to spend his bank, and he can't. He doesn't have any other tech. No Hydrogen, no Roach Warren. He needs to spend his money. There we go. 46 links on the way. But they're still not ready. We start stepping forward. Focusing down that macro hatch. Hatchery is going to go down. Good tank shots as well. Ooh. Yeah, as there's just too much link, maybe we take control of the low ground. We clean up the tank once again. Now, behind this future, he's done with tank production. He's getting... Oh, that's 200 dead things. Jesus. But he's getting into Winter Mines. Drilling claws on the way. 3-3 three, three as well. The upgrades of future are insane. And where's plus two carapace, by the way? Uh, that's a mistake. Plus two carapace. Far more, far more important than plus two melee. The target firing is too good. The bailings go down. And future. Oh, the target once again. One Bailey makes it through. But the control here from Future, it's insane. It's disgusting as he pushes on forward here. Only links to defend. And this may just be it. Future is snowballing out of control. Doesn't even need 3-3. As he has broken the back of Silky. Stimming on forward. GG gets called. And Future will take game number one. GG again. Really clean control out of Future. Like... The way that he was able to target down so many bailings in so many of those fights. Of course, the tank positioning, the momentum in general here. And yeah, especially the moments when he was able to take down that spawning pool. Once that did occur, that meant that there was no way for Silky to really engage. He couldn't throw away his army because he just couldn't replace it. And Future takes game one. And now we're working towards game number two. It's going to be Silky's map of choice. I'm very curious what we go for. Very curious. Where exactly are you taking us? Again, it's loser's pick, the way this format works. And Silky, it's going to be on him to try to figure out, is he phoning a friend? Is he like, oh, I need, I need some advice. Let me call up Firefly. <laughs> How do I beat Terran? He's like, no, versus Terran. Unwinnable, Poppy. Unwinnable. Oh, smooch. I'm curious. Again, Equilibrium is typically known as the map, as is known as the Zerg map. Up next, I'm feeling aggression. I'm feeling it all in. I'm feeling like Silky wants to spread his wings and play his game. Am I thinking Oceanborn? I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a smaller map like Oceanborn or Hardlet. Hard, right, of course, yeah, Hardlet, right? We'll see. We shall see. Do we go over a smaller map or a larger map? What kind of game does Silky want? What kind of game are we going for? Silky played with 10 times the zoom for superior micro. Exactly, exactly. It's helping, buddy. It's helping. Now, the problem is that this may be the first time that Silky is playing with, like, double glasses. Like, double double layered glasses. And he may need some time to adjust. You know? Like, it can be it can be a little bit daunting and a little bit uh, intense to, to zoom in that much here on the map. And here we go, we have our map of choice. It is not Oceanborn, it is not Hard Lead, it is Golden Aura. Let's go. Golden Aura is coming up next. Again, a short resistance by ground has a secure three-way setup. I'm feeling roaches. I'm feeling roaches here from Silky, but we'll see. We'll see what he does decide to go for. What do you have prepared? 
I want to believe he has how he uh, he has a build prepared. Don't let us down. Don't let us down. Here we go. Oh, as we're letting in, and in the bottom right hand corner of Golden Aura, we have a match between esports. It is the future. And in the top left, we have his opponent. We have for the starving camels. It is Silky. Here we go. Once again, future going for that low ground setup. Now, whether he goes CC first on Golden Aura, that would be insane. That would be crazy if he were to cut that, that many corners on a map like this. But we'll see. There it is. Pool first out of Silky. We have a Rax first here for out of future. Here we go. So again, I mean, I say Rax first. It's standard opener here, but it's important to point out because last game future did go for a CC first instead. So important to take note that, of course, future is being more careful here. He's respecting the map and respecting his opponent. Doesn't want to cut too many corners. Now, this pool first shouldn't really achieve too much. Um, this isn't as aggressive as a gas first. With this pool first, we can get faster queens. We can get into a couple of lings to try to get some economic damage and delay the CC. There it is. Four lings are on the way. Oh, we're going to be going into six even. Okay. Interesting. Six lings in production. Their goal here is to try to get on top of the CC. Now, unfortunately for Silky, there's a low ground wall. There's a low ground racks, which means we should soon be walling off. And if we do wall off, these things won't find much damage at all. And there we go. That factory is on the way. CC is going to, SCV is going to be coming on in. Does confirm the timing of that hatchery. He's aware of the pool first. And there is that factory on the way. So this is not the low ground two racks opener. This is racks into factory. Instead, we lift up the, oh my God, we go for greedy here. We get the Overlord. And that will supply block Silky. We do get behind the wall just in time. The wall! No! Oh, God. We're, good. we're, we're okay, Pat. We're okay. Oh. I was worried for a moment, but we are a little bit supply blocked here. Regardless, the wall is up and running, and future is safe and sound. I would say, off of these openers, um, Silky is behind. He is behind here. If he went hatch gas first, sorry, hatch gas pool, he would have been in a beautiful position. Going pool first like this, these lings, they didn't achieve anything. The wall was going to be here anywhere. We're not we're not making reapers. We're not forcing reapers to stay at home. Like, uh, it's 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 been a bit of a rough start here for Zilki. Again, personally, I was hoping for... Oh, I was hoping for a faster gas. And we are going to be spinning our gas elsewhere. That is a fast lair. You can see the lair in the production tab. We're skipping link speed. We're going straight for the lair. We have a second gas geyser on the way. What is this for? Is this two base muta? Third gas geyser as well. If we were casting me and Micah, I would say this is two base hydras. And and hey, maybe that's who Silky was calling earlier. Maybe he's like, yo, Mia. <laughs> I heard that you were at a family gathering, mate. I'm Zerk. I'm family too. Help me, Papi. Help me. I, it's going to be four gases. Okay, never mind. If it was three gases, I would think, like, yo, Hydras? With four gases, it should be Muta play instead. No, the Hellion dives in! The Hellion does bypass the Queens, gets into the main base, sees the gases, and sees the lair as well. We are aware of the potential of a Spire. And there it is. The Spire has been thrown down. Two base Muta out of Silky. A very risky maneuver, and it has been scouted. Now, Future, he may not have seen the Spire itself, but everything he saw screams Mutus. But we'll see how he deals with it. For now, we have a bio tank push getting set up, getting into really early tank production. Interesting. Getting out of Hellions into faster tanks. I'm not too sure how I feel about this, considering the build he's up against. Behind this, getting into his third CC. Two more Raxes on the way. Viking has arrived to shut down some of these overlords. Future just focusing on a bio army instead. It looks like he's going to be chilling back at home. 
We're going to defend. Working towards Stim. Overseer goes down. Looks like, yep, the Viking killed one of those overlords and he's going for another. Shouldn't be able to get it though. He's taking a lot of hits though. <clears throat> Takes too many hits. The Viking does go down. Sorry, I've been dying this entire time. There we go. Meters are in production. We have link speed on the way as well. I'm loving the change link, keeping eyes on where the bio army is. Keeping eyes on where exactly future is positioned. And as a result, Soki, he may be able to sneak around and get some economic damage done. He's making enough meters to one shot. He is making enough meters to one shot and yeah, I'm one shot SCVs, I should specify. I mean, I guess Marines as well. And he is going to be sharking around here, looking for a way in. Here we go, the armies that do meet. They do meet here in the center of them. The tanks are caught on siege as well. Legs, they collapse on this army, the Mutas, and we're going to clean everything up. And Fuchsia pushing out at this timing was not the correct call. He gets caught. The pants are down, and Silky is going right for that mineral line. Seven SCVs go down. Oh, my God. Does he have enough to break through? He looks like he does. He gets some of the Marines. The Marines go down. The tanks do thereafter as well. The turret trying to do what it can. But Fuchsia, again, it, moving out at that moment was not the right move as... Again, the Mutas that had map control, they shut them down. 11 SCVs go down as well. We even take down Arax. And what can Future do? He's stuck in his mineral line. Stuck with those SCVs. We go for a second Rax. We deny. Did we deny Combat Shields? I think we did. Or it might have just finished. Okay, Combat Shields was denied. The Mutas getting out of control. Silky. Looking to fight back. We may have lost this overall series here. It may be a 5-0 here on the scoreboard, but Silky, he takes down, the, he takes control of the third base. Pushes towards the main. And Future, he is in trouble. He's stuck here on these two bases. Building up his marine counts, getting into cyclones even, just anything that shoots up. Anything that can deal with these mutas. From here, Silky can drone. He can just drone from here, take a fourth. Take his gases, tech up, work towards 1-1. One, one. Silky is looking fine. Uh, doesn't have the biggest worker advantage that I would like to see, but uh, we're, we're joining nonetheless. We are going to be joining nonetheless. Oof. That's the Mutas are forced back. Four more dead SCVs. And with that, the game is going to be settling down for now. Again, Silky, he still has map control. He still has, I mean, control of, of everything here. Alba uh, Future is slowly building up his army. Going to be slowly taking that third base. This is also why I wish that Silky was a little bit greedier, and oh, my wishes have been answered as we have joined up to 70. 70 workers, four gases, sorry, six gases being taken. One, one on the way, plus two range, oh, sorry, plus two air attack, bailing speed. Silky, he's getting everything he needs. Now, Silky is behind in the upgrades because he invested into these mutas, so 2-2 two, two is still a ways off. So technically, Future has more potential with his bio army, but the numbers, the numbers, they work in Silky's favor. Bailings are on the way. Bailing speed about to finish up in 10 seconds. Silky, he wants to crush this third once again. Now, we do have a, te a decent tank line. Uh, Infestation bits on the way to get into Hive and then Vipers. Here we go, the bandits are rolling in. Ah, uh, but tanks are in position. We do get into the mineral line, and we do crash in. 10, 17. 
17 SEVs go down. Ay, ay, ay. And we can rotate over towards that third base. We can go for the tank and we will get it. Tank goes down. Vikings, Cyclones. Anything and everything here at the third. Ooh, even almost the medevac. Silky just making sure that future doesn't stabilize. Keeping his worker count low. Keeping his high tech units low as well. And he's getting ready for another wave. Wave number three. There's that hive in production. So again, get into vipers, get into adrenal glands, maybe even ultra production as well. It may be too greedy to take into an ultra cavern, but you know, we, we will gain access to it. Fourth CC on the way on location. And Silky just amassing more banelings. And there are no widow mines. That's the problem. We're relying on a bio tank, no mines. Which means this Ling Bane army can get out of control. Mutas as well. And it looks like instead of going for the third, we're going straight for the fourth. There is one tank in position. We will respect it. Get the back off. Silky going for a bailing run at the same time. Ooh, almost gets a kill in the CC. We need a repair. Uh oh. <gasps> He's going for it. He's going for the CC. The turret is going to be going down. And can we take down the base itself? It looks like we cannot. The repairs are too good. A couple of mutas get shaved off. There's that ultra cavern that we were talking about. It is on the way. <gasps> the mutas. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, both players a little bit asleep at the wheel there. The mutas, they, they just flew over the, the marines. Marines, not quite paying attention. Silky going to be backing off, working towards 2-2, maxing out. Now, Silky, now that he's maxed out, he should trade. Um, you don't want to sit on a Ling Bane army like this and allow Future to max out himself. We do need to hit either the third or the fourth. And even if it's like rough, like taking some tank shots to the face, we do need to try to keep Future on the back foot. Otherwise, Future could come back in this game. So I am a little bit concerned. Silky is spinning up his army. It looks like he wants to try to hit both bases at once. Now, if Silky throws away too much supply too quickly, then that will trigger a counterattack. And depending on how poorly Silky trades or how well he trades, I mean, we'll see if, if Future does decide to try to move out. Let's see we go. Silky is pushing. We have Ling Bane towards the left. We have a Ling Bane Muta towards the right. To be rolling on forward. Trying to keep the attention here. Off of the main army. We go for the third. We go right for the third base. Tank goes down. And so will another. And another as well. Not two tanks. We only get three SCVs though. Not quite worth it for Silky. And Future, he's recovering. Future, he only loses three workers. He's slowly catching up. We're getting there. Now, even if Future does max out, he won't really have a bank to work with, so he's going to have to slowly work towards a fourth, sorry, a fifth base. Morling Bane all the way. Ultras this time as well. Again, I do feel like we're just giving Future a lot of time. And is Silky going to be punished for it? Is it going to be too much? Okay, they roll in. They get into the middle line. Oh! Oh my god. Nine dead SCVs. Not like this. Future a little bit late to react. A little bit late to pull away. And it looks like Silky wants to try to surround the army. Yeah, from both angles. Would it go for the third? Is he coming in too soon? Push in from the left. Push in from the right. Bailey's good target firing. They do not connect with the Marines. But here comes so many more, and we do collapse on the base. That's only two dead workers. Oh, my God. Future, he is holding. He trades damn well there. The Marine Army did avoid the bailings. The workers were pulled back in time. Future, he lost 24 Marines there in that fight. A handful of Marauders. Silky remaxing once again. For a moment there, the supplies evened up, which was crazy. Both players dropped to 140. 
But Silky has a bank, so he can remax. He can remax again and again. Future cannot. Not yet. Not until he takes a fifth. There we go. Ultras are on the way. Plus Sphere attack has completed. Still no Vipers. Without Vipers, pushing into these tank lines is always going to be brutal for the Zerg. No Blinding Clouds. No Spellcasters. Just trying to force our way in. And here we go. This time pushing towards the fourth. Oh, Ultras are getting picked off though. Big Snipes as well. Oh, that's three, th th four dead Ultras. Get a really good trade here for the future. Oh, that's, uh, I spoke too soon. As Ling Bay rolls into the third base, 24 dead SCVs. Ay, ay, ay. Future was doing so well until this moment. He picked off some Ultras. He was feeling good about himself. I was feeling good about Future. And then 24 SCVs go down in the blink of an eye. Big mind shots. Oh, my God. Massive mind connections. <laughs> But alas, Future needs more than that, especially after losing that Mineral Lion. He was almost closing that gap. gap. He was almost catching up. Almost. And here we go. Sil Silky remaxing for, what is this, a fourth time? For a fourth time. Pushing in towards the left-hand side. Once again, closing that distance. Ah, uh, big mine shot's gonna be going off. This choke point is so brutal to push up. Yeah, snipes go off. We take down another three ultras. But at the same time, we get on top of the third, and this third is so exposed. We take down the workers. We take down the mineral lion. 17 more dead SCVs, and future is all in. He's just sending it right down the middle. Now he's up in army supply. He is up in supply. He can make this work. Wedging himself in between the bases, but we do see Silky coming in from behind. And it's only a bio army. Big Snipe's going to be going for the Bailings. The Bailings are barely oh, going to be enough. Big connections. GG gets called. Silky cleans up the Ghost Army. Ooh, and Silky will take game number two. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was getting a bit concerned at times. I was like, yo, are we... Are we throwing away too much? Is, is this becoming too much? And Future, he fought back. He fought back hard. But alas, was not able to surpass the deficit from the early game. Surpass losing so much of those mutants being contained. And with that, GG. GG, well played. We wrap up this best of seven. Did go 5-1 to one in favor of Matcherino. But shout out to Silky. Silky did fight back. Did make Future work for it. And did take a game himself. GG, well played. With that, that was our first Team League match of the night, and we have another right around the corner. Up next, Shopify Rebellion versus Team Basilisk. Ah, oh, oh my god, it is gonna be insane. It's gonna be an insane series. Bjorn versus Trigger, Lambert versus Raynor, Harston versus Serral. After the break. We're gonna be going on a short one. When we return, we'll have our final series of the night. See you then. It's gonna be a good one.